So here's more about the VW Golf from AC Propulsion that has um, infinitely adjustable uh, 0 to 100 uh, regenerative braking. So you actually bring it to a stop with regenerative braking. Goes 0 to 90 and was, I um, guess it's about 10 years old or so. And the batteries are in that, that thing down the center. Now this is a converter that AC Propulsion made available. It actually will charge the battery on 110. Uh, there it is. And it goes into the normal 220 plug, which is that yellow thing, which then goes into the... which then goes into the uh, charge port here. So this can be either 220 or 110, and it can go from, uh, I think the top is about 40 amps. Uh, I think that's all they allow you to do, but you could, it could go more than that except for the limitation. Now this is the battery pack, and it turns out number 16 is this one down, down, down on the bottom there, number 16, and that's the one I had problems with, the one that was empty, completely zero. Turns out you can't get the bottom row out unless you take the entire top row off. And I, you know, I've taken the serial communication bus out and laid it over there. This is the top string. And you know, once you understand how these things are are mounted, you know, they're not that that these difficult to do. And I can also take the opportunity to clear some of this dust off of the top here because it's accumulated dust in the years it's been sitting. So I'm going to take these top batteries off, then I'll be able to move the bottom communications bus out of the way and then get number 16 out. Meanwhile, I've got this cheap charger here that's an 8.6, uh, it says 8.6 volts is all I've been able to get it up to. It's a Sears charger and it's uh, four AGM batteries, which uh, these are spiral wound uh, gel cells, this four gel or, or, spir or, or AGM. And it's, it's just not charging this battery more than 8.6 volts. We'll see. Uh, but I've got a spare battery over there that used to be number 11. So and that seems to charge up to at least 70%. So when I put it all back together, uh, I will be able to test out the electronics and make sure everything's working properly. Then we'll get new batteries. We'll rebuild the entire, uh, we'll take it all apart and we'll rebuild the entire um, uh, pack. Then we'll jack the car the car up 31 inches, and there's a 31 inch jack. We'll jack the entire car up 31 inches, and then we'll uh, raise the battery pack up through those. There's a pulley arrangement. Raise the battery pack back into the thing there, and then lock it into place with all of the uh, nuts and bolts that go with it. Once you understand how these uh, serial communication bus and how the thing is wired, you know you can't really go wrong. Still. <laughs> Just in case, as a non-engineer, you know, I, I marked all these so that I, I know what everything is when it comes off. And actually, you don't have to take the, um, you don't have to take the firmware off the battery at all. It turns out, so all you have that, that all you have to do is take off the the um, hot wires to the um, positive and negative terminals. And the other wires underneath are to a transducer, which is used to regulate the heat of the battery. There's actually an element underneath the battery that, that provides heat. So when I replace number 16, what I'll do is I'll take the transducer out, uh, replace the, the firmware unit on top, then put the whole thing back, and then rewire the whole thing the way it's meant to be rewired. You know, that's, it's a fairly time-consuming job. And it's not a it's not an easy thing, you know, it's not an easy one hour change out by any means. It's more like six or eight hours, even for the, the batteries on the top row. The last time number eleven failed and that took uh, about six hours to replace counting testing the battery pack. This time number sixteen, and it's only me doing it, not anybody skilled, so it's gonna take a little probably longer. But that's, that's what it is, and it's a lot of fun. You know, all the engineering work has been done ahead of time by marvelous AC propulsion, and all I'm doing is, uh, is put it, understanding it and putting it back together. It's actually a marvelous piece of machinery. This battery management system is probably the best that's ever been devised for lead-acid batteries. Unfortunately, um, these yellow top Optima batteries, the company was bought by Johnson Controls, which derated the batteries. They used to be 55 amp hours, now they're more like 39. Anyway, it's going to be fun.